Okay. All right. I'm going to just almost finish with these uh, definitions. The final one, there's a lot, you know, Kill Mom and I argue about this, a lot of confusion about what we're talking about now. I think, you know, the internet, distributed network of networks that offers ubiquitous, you know, nobody's going to argue with that. I think that's the definition of the internet as a technology. But the impact of the internet on our economy, our society, and politics is much more summed up in this. Digital economy is one based on digital technologies, including not only the ICT sector, but traditional economic sectors such as manufacturing. I think, and I'm going to you know, give you the conclusion before we finish, I think talking about internet governance is talking about that first part. I mean, that's what John Postal and all these guys were doing, you know, assigning the IP numbers and ICANN and all this kind of stuff. That's what that's all about. But that doesn't have a lot to do with this. And so to say that you're going to, that this group or any group or ICANN or IGF is going to organize and manage the digital economy is... I think just, you know, a misconception of enormous, enormous dimensions. It just shows incredible conceptual confusion. It's not, a, it's not unreasonable in the sense that the, the internet developed because a group of professors in the United States with defense agency money decided to connect supercomputers and send emails to each other. And at that level, that's fine. Uh, and then, you know, organized as that cute little thing from Vince Surf showed, you know, a little post office mailing system. But that's not what's going on here when the automobile industry is going to be transformed, when healthcare delivery is going to be changed fundamentally, when education is going to be turned on its head, uh, when manufacturing, none of you are going to have jobs, or at least the jobs that you're thinking of. I tell my students, you know, you're wasting your time in the classroom if you're preparing for jobs in this century uh, because the internet and the digital economy have arrived and they're going to fundamentally upend your lives over the next 10 to 20 years. You're going to have to be very, very flexible. Okay. All right. Now, there was a great, there was a great quote uh, that Adam put up. Here's another great quote about politics. This is by this guy, John Perry Barlow. I never met him. Um, governments of the industrial world, very dramatic. It's almost written in Hobbesian language. That's the way Hobbes used to write. You weary giants of flesh and steel, I come from cyberspace, the new home of mind. On behalf of the future, I ask you of the past to leave us alone. You are not welcome among us. You have no sovereignty where we gather. This is the Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace, 20 years ago. And I'm telling you, and it'll be the first question, it's over, folks. It's over. Okay? But I will ask that, I will throw that out for discussion. Uh, but I hear so many echoes of this in every document written about Internet governance. And so many assumptions that are brought to the discussion. I mean, I think almost everybody would agree this is absurd right now. But some of the documents recently published, some of those WISIS documents and things like that, may actually read the same way 10 or 15 years from now. Certainly, if you read George Bush's speeches about the Middle East and what he was going to accomplish by the Iraq War 12 years later, they don't read really well. They don't read really well. If you go into a problem with a mistaken set of assumptions and you actually act on them, you can create a real mess. Or you can create Donald Trump. Trump is a direct result of some of these decisions that were made during the Bush administration. I'm glad I'm on video. Okay, so now we're going to start the discussions. Um, just a quick show of 